Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar titled Plumex, who is talking about my research. My name is Sarah Tabai, and I'm the Library Information Literacy Director at Turo Libraries. And along with Tim Valente, our scholarly communications librarian today, we will talk about Plumex. I will start by defining Plumex, then Tim will continue by explaining how these metrics work. And then I give you a few reasons as to why you should care about Plumex. And finally, we'll show how you can access your personal Plumex metrics on the Turo Scholar, our institutional repository. So what is Plumex anyway? For those unfamiliar with Plum Analytics or Plumex, they belong to the small but increasingly influential community of altmetric data providers. Simply put, they are alternative research metrics because they supplement the traditional bibliometrics. So if the traditional metrics show the citation counts, journal impact factor, and the author's age index, for example, Plumex metrics show the real-time interest and impact the research artifact may have outside of the usual citation count. So they help us understand how our scholarship is viewed and or discussed online almost immediately. And they provide us with details on the ways people interact with individual pieces of research in the online environment. Now, whether that research output is a scholarly article, a podcast, a policy, data sets, video plays, video plays, and what's not, that's what makes them such unique metrics. So how is this counting done and what is being counted in these metrics? Well, Plumex metrics are captured from the web and a variety of data sources that are uh, either subscription or free access. And it pulls together this, this data and produces these five categories of metrics, which are usage, captures, mentions, citations, and social media. Uh, what you can see at the bottom of this slide is a snapshot from our institutional repository, Toro Scholar. And you'll see that usage has the highest number at nearly 1 million in total. So I'm not going to talk too much about how the metrics are gathered, but rather what is reported. The first one here, usage, helps us understand if users are downloading or reading the work. So Toro Scholar reports download counts, and that's pretty straightforward. It's how many times people click download. Uh, but when a user lands on a page or clicks a link to a web page from a variety of sources, these also get counted because it's likely that the user is then reading the abstract on that page or at least is interested in the work itself because they clicked on it. Captures can be leading indicators of citations. So this is tracking if end users are bookmarking, favoriting, or otherwise saving the resource to use later. Uh, if they're using a citation manager, which you'll see export saves, that's coming from a citation manager, they are likely going to use that resource later on, possibly when they're writing their own work and then will cite the work that they've saved. Citations is one of the most traditional bibliometrics. It's how many times a work is cited by another work. Plumex gathers this metric from at least 15 citation metric sources. And some of the, the bigger ones include are uh, Scopus, Crossref, and PubMed. Other ones include clinical citation indexes such as Dynamed Plus Topics, PubMed Clinical Guidelines, and National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, NICE UK. It's important to remember that this metric says a little about how the work is cited by another work, just that it is cited by another work. Still, citation counts are fundamental to bibliometrics, and indexes of citations in law, medicine, in other fields are centuries old. Mentions are meant to capture conversations around works online via blogs, comments, video streaming sites, and references in Wikipedia. And lastly, we have social media, which includes, of course, Twitter and Facebook tweets and shares, but it also includes Reddit upvotes, uh, minus downvotes, sharing uh, ratings on Amazon, likes on YouTube, for academic journal articles in particular, Twitter is pretty popular to share new research. Uh, and researchers usually will link to the paper either with a URL to the publisher's site or the DOI, that's the digital object identifier, so that it's picked up in the metrics counts. Now that we've covered these five categories of metrics, 
it's important to exercise some caution about metrics in general. So we want to emphasize that alt metrics are another variable in the complex equation of evaluating research impact. They do not replace traditional metrics. They complement them and they provide insights that were previously unmeasured. And as Sarah mentioned, they are almost immediately accessible. Whereas in comparison, traditional metrics generally take time. So it's usually a long amount of time before a research article gets cited. It's worth noting that like most metrics, there can be legitimate or unscrupulous methods of boosting numbers. Researchers should be aware of the ethics surrounding research and authorship and should consult the academic integrity policy, the norms of the relevant field, and recommendations of publishers and working groups like International Committee of Medical Journal Editors and others. So what can you do with the information and why should you care about Plumex? Um, one of the things that um, I always ask myself is like, have you ever thought about who is actually reading your work? So with these research metrics, you will be able to immediately measure awareness and interest towards your academic work. And Plumex offers evidence about how and where your research is being shared and discussed and by whom. And in the competitive research landscape, Plumex offers metrics to support your research impact footprint and gives you ways to uncover and tell the source of your research. So as an individual author or scholar, therefore Plumex helps you assess individual research impact and you can view each of your work's metrics um, on Toro Scholar and I will show you that at the end of the presentation. This is in addition to your cite, uh, usual citation counts. So you now have also this non-traditional impact including usage and social media metrics, which we didn't have in the past, and therefore can add another level to your faculty evaluation and helping reporting to your dean or chair. Now, this is especially important because we usually don't see much interaction with a new article for a while, and also it's important for faculty just to start publishing their research. In some universities and colleges, actually, such data is used by faculty for promotion review. And it's also used for grant applications. So this is a newer way of promoting yourself and show the full range of impact that your research has made or is making. If you are director of a program, the chair of a department or dean of a school, such metrics can also help you in assessing the programs or school research impact and can make the school more visible. In other words, you can track your researchers and their research. You can demonstrate ROI of research money you can identify rising stars among early career researchers, and you can tell a better narrative about everything that's happening with research in your department and determine whether research is a good, good potential investment, analyze the strength of research at your institution, your school, your department, and see which content is receiving more um, attention. So instead of a static list of publications with Plumex metrics, you can get a live update of the publications and how they are being received by others. And that's the strength of Plumex. Now, let me go um, live to uh, Plumex on Turo Scholar. Let me share this page with you. So this is Turo Scholar, but how did I get to Turo Scholar? Um, you go to Turo Library's website, turolib.org. And once you're on this page, you just go to Turo Scholar here at the bottom and access Turo Scholar here. This is the same page. I have already an account, but if you're interested in seeing your readership, and um, accessing your Plumex, you have to open an account here. So I have already done that. My page looks different because I have administrative privileges, but the point is that you need to get to this author dashboard. Once you are on the author dashboard, you can access this readership, which is like showing my articles and my presentations um, have been accessed throughout the world. And these are the different places that show that. But right now I'm just interested in Plumex metrics. Okay. 
And here are the five metrics that Tim was talking about, usage citations, capture mentions, and social media. So my articles have gotten a lot of usage metrics, which means that they have been downloaded or read. Uh, no citations yet. Uh, some of them are pretty recent. Um, so, but I hope I will get citations at some point. It was one, one was captured, which um, shows, as Tim was saying also, that there's a high chance that somebody has kept this somewhere, saved it somewhere, and wants to use it later on for citations. It wasn't mentioned anywhere on any blog or anything, but also on social media, it was on Twitter. And that's the place where a lot of our, uh, you know, scholarly articles are being shared. Uh, with other scientists and scholars. So you can see the usage number here. I'm only interested in one that I'm gonna show you. That's my most recent article on um, an OER pilot program that we did um, at the undergraduate level here in Turo. You see how many people have viewed the abstract, how many have downloaded it, and how many, and there's this one capture that was um, is saved in Mendeley. And Mendeley is basically a citation management tool. And then it was also tweeted. Um, and it is on Twitter. And that's always a good thing because this means that it's being shared with others. So it gives you the same numbers here on the top again. And then you can, you know, do more like what was, uh, you know, how many captures it was it had in the last year or the last three years. This is a pretty recent article. so. I wouldn't have data uh, for a year or three years. And here gives you a little bit of the description of your art of my article, and also then who has tweeted it. And here you can see all the tweets. So there is pretty much um, a lot of information that shows how your article or any other artifact that you have on Turo Scholar is. Um, you know, read by people, and you can see the interaction across uh, the whole online environment. So I hope this was useful. Let me get back to our PowerPoint. So here are the steps that I just showed you. So you can follow these steps again. You have to go to the library website. This is a step that I did not put here on the slide. But once you're on the library website at turolib.org, you go to Turo Scholar, you click on my account, you open a free account, you go to the author's dashboard, and then you click on Plum on the Plum logo, which is on the left side of the screen. And then you can go through all of the different metrics that we just talked about. And again, here I highlighted uh, my account so you can see where you have to go and access that. Thank you. And remember using metrics responsibly, um, as Tim has mentioned. And here's our contact information. If you have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to either contact me or Tim, and we will be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Thank you.